welcome to the Shifty Crab campaign mode. I am your host and the nine time champion. I'm like The Undertaker. I'm going to start having smoke filling up like The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Can you beat the streak? Like, that's going to be me. I'm going to rise up. You're going to hear the gong. Like, and I'm going to be here once a year. Not wrestle at any other time of the year. Just come out at WrestleMania because my legs can't do it anymore. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be me nine times. Like, there's not much more to say, really. There's not again. much more to say. I really, I really didn't think you was going to do it this time. And I just to be yeah. fair... So this, yeah. So this was the the greatest uh, game exclusive of all time. I got absolutely demolished in this. I'm not even gonna lie about it. And I really thought I, I re- genuinely thought I had a good chance this time with Metal Gear Solid. And man, I got destroyed. But Vince, he looked like he was having it for a little while. And I, I thought, you know what? That's he might two have weeks this in one. a row now. Two weeks oh, wow, in a row, yeah. Vince has come out swinging. Like I don't know who he's texting. Like, but like every time that poll goes up, I obviously put my vote in. Yeah. And yeah. then I go away, and then Vince has like 38% of the votes. Like, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm like, okay, yeah. let the people, let the people spend some time with it, drink it in. But all characters aside, any one of those three should have won that. You know, they were all very good choices. Yeah. And yeah. Um, out of those three, my favorite was Mel Gibson. Solid. So, like, I'm, I'm shocked <laughs> that that didn't do as well as it did. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy it didn't. Like, but I'm, uh, it should have done a lot better than it did. But, but Last of Us was looking have. looking pretty close. Oh, by the way, um, my son Harry, he, I told him about the topic, and he was like, he wanted to put in his little saying. He said Super Mario Brothers on the Nets. So, which I thought was a good shout. That's a very good shout. It's a very good, yeah, a yeah. Very good shout, and I have shouted for it before. And uh, but as as is customary on this, yeah. I forget all of my other picks, <laughs> and I go with whatever I feel like that week. But it's a very good shout. Yeah. That kind of that makes him a difficult winner. So he's now above Vince as well. <laughs> so uh, no, Probably but this that week works. that's in the past. That's in the past. Mm-hmm. This week, mm-hmm. this is a good one. I think this is a feel good one as well. We are going to be debating what we think, our personal opinion of which dead gaming franchise should be revived and brought back to life in all of its splendor, like. Nothing but feel good in this one until we rip each of his decisions to shreds. But um, <laughs> hopefully all three of these should be brought back and maybe they will. But uh, I think this week, Terry, you were the person who picked the order. It was your topic this week. So, uh, yeah, who's going first this week? So, yes, I've already spun the wheel. It is myself going first, followed by Adam and then Vince. Give it the full name, please. The current champion the current um, champion Adam, the master which, debater the master debater the master the giant debater. master debater yeah so yeah this week it's going to be mm-hmm. hypothetically you're given this kind of uh, phoenix down type potion you're allowed to just chuck it once on any dead franchise you want to bring back mm-hmm. and it's back to life and we've got a brand new game from it um so yeah i'm going to start with my choice the floor is yours I would like to bring back Time Splitters. Oh, okay. I had a hint. I had a hunt. Okay. Now, and again, this is one of those things. Um, there's going to be so many games out there that I could, I'd want to bring back. But Time Splitters is the, just the first thing that came to my mind, and and it's such a beloved franchise of mine, and I really believe that it deserves to be revived um, because Time Splitters was just before we had Halo or anything like that. I do, I do believe that that was the best multiplayer um, deathmatch type shooter that we had. Um, I think that it imp- improved on what GoldenEye did on the N64. Everyone loved GoldenEye. You know, that GoldenEye was the FPS on the console. It was the first FPS on console that everyone wanted to play. It's the one that everyone played split screen. Um, obviously, on the N64, it had, you know, the four player ports. But for me, it was all about time splitters. And specifically with Time Splitters 2 and then uh, Future Perfect, I really do feel like they captured a moment in time um, of couch multiplayer, which I think is really coming back again now. Um, And and not just that, I think it was kind of ahead of its time in a way in that it was just, it was just multiplayer mayhem. And that, that, that game deserves to have an online player base. Uh, like obviously, if we were to revive this, I'm not going to just be bringing back time splitters, and it's going to be 
it is, you know, what it was back then. Now you got to bring it to the forefront. You got, you got to change it and adapt it to modern times. I mean, I would probably add some kind of jumping functionality to it. Cause if you don't remember jump time switches or God, no, you couldn't jump in those games. And I think that now that wouldn't kind of pass. You'd have to change that up now, but I just feel like it would, probably match there's so many game modes in time splitters anyway and i really feel like um it'll probably even adapt well to the battle royale genre i won't pitch it as, as a battle royale game but it could certainly be a mode in it which would work really well um but yeah i mean time splitters was so cool because it was like you had so many different types of maps over different times and then obviously the weapons creating custom loadouts from everything from like back to um, 1920s Chicago to, the, you know, distant future sci-fi and anything in between, you completely mix it up again. The characters were just crazy. Like there was so many different characters in it. I think there was over like a hundred um, different characters, all unique in their style. And yeah, I just feel like this game would work so, so well in the current day. And I just feel like that, the franchise was cut too soon due to the closure of uh, Free uh, Free Radical. Um, we all know that Thomas Bitter's 4 was in the works. We've seen screenshots of that game, and it was then um, the whole um, development of that was collapsed. And um, Crytek now own the rights to it. So, it, and, and I know there are members of Free Radical there, and there's been murmurs of that being revived at some point, and I feel like there's enough of a fan base out there to give it a shot. So I'm chucking that phoenix down to it bring back time splitters back to life give me a time splitters for we need it now mr perry jess where to begin with this oh a lot to unpack i think it's a strong choice i think um there's a market for time splitters i i'm not sure what vince has picked i think there's a it's maybe not the biggest market for time splitters, but I know for you personally, it means a lot to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, so I know that the, I know that I suppose the theme of this is a personal game. Some is our choice. Um, not what we think should be picked is what we want to be picked. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very hard to argue against any of these, to be honest, because it's all personal. Um, yeah. I don't know. I always preferred time splitters in the arcade. You know, like you'd see that when you could play it in the arcade time splitters, like like I went to a few things, it was always good. But for me, it's just it never hit with me. So um I don't really have out. too much to say. Out. I don't I don't really have too much to say about this, Vince. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna let you down again because last week I said I've never played Metal Gear Solid. And this week I'm gonna say I've never played Time Splitters. Gosh. Because I've never played Time Splitters. It's just one of those games that completely passed me by. But very first first person shooter game I ever played was Halo. And that was kind of the benchmark of what FPSs could be on console anyway at the time. I mean, we had things like GoldenEye and then obviously Time Splitters, which did well, don't get me wrong. They're highly regarded as some of the best FPSs out there. But I think modernizing it would have helped the series. But how much weight does the name still carry? I don't know. I mean, like, there's obviously retro fans out there who would love to see more time splitters because, you know, it was a product of its time. It's considered great, but I think a modern refresh could probably help it, though, honestly. But is that going to sell? Hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe not. Enough. I don't think even the thing hmm. is, time splitters, even back in the day, didn't sell well. I remember, I remember reading in like an official PlayStation magazine, mm -hmm. if something didn't sell, there was like, oh, it's got Time Splitters 2 syndrome, like meaning that if it was a quality game, because it was really highly rated, mm -hmm. um, Time Splitters 2, but it just wasn't huge, um, which is probably one of the reasons why it didn't get the four. But I just think that it there's enough of a demand of the hardcore player base to to you know see more of it. But you got you guys yeah. really did. I mean, obviously, if you started with FPSs with Halo, Vince. Yeah. I can't exactly say you missed out because obviously you started there, but um, Adam, you missed out. You missed out. No, I, I did play it. Like I play, I also played, what was the last one? Uh, Future Perfect, was it? Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, which I, I played that one as well, which I think that's quite widely known as not being a great game. Future, Future Perfect, Perfect is good. Um, time, the two was my favorite. I think that was its peak. Um, 
yeah, personally. But I know some people that do prefer a, a future perfect. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it's a solid choice. I think it ticks that uh, personal love. You've spoke about time splitters a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If if I was putting my business hat on, I don't think this would be the way forward to go. I think there's a lot of other more uh, bigger games with a bigger French, uh, bigger fan base. So it, they kind of balance each other out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vince, you got anything else to say? Or, oh, you didn't really play it. You haven't played it, have you? So. No, I haven't really played it, so I can't really speak. How's your buns? That's all you want to say. Yeah, push your buns. I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I believe you said it was me next year. It is, it is you. Yeah. Okay. I want to take you down. A l- imagine this, okay? We go to E3. Not just watching it. We're there in the audience. Press pass, shifty crab, front row, obviously. And you're watching, let's say, the Microsoft uh, uh, panel uh, show. Um, and the screen goes black. The lights go down, and then on the screen, three green dots appear, and you hear that tech booting up. That's right. It's Splinter Cell. You want to talk about a game that deserves to be on current gen. It's Splinter Cell. My God, what a series of games. Like, probably as close to perfect a stealth game as you've really had since maybe Metal Gear Solid, the original, and maybe Metal Gear Solid 2 was a close competitor. Snake it wasn't as stealthy. Um, but my God, the f- badassery that you feel as you're doing the splits above a wall, like in a, in Splinter Cell, and you're just dropping on that night vision and the precision of your guns. And then you've got Ironside's voice coming through. Like, which is like sex in a voice, basically, when you hear him <laughs> speak as Sam Fisher. And it does have the other side of things. It does have, it's what fans want. You can't have a, a, a another E3 or last year's year of get, summer of gaming where people are saying, is this when we're going to hear about Splinter Cell? Any Ubisoft panel, give us Splinter Cell. Any panel, give us Splinter Cell. A Nintendo panel, give us Splinter Cell. Like sometimes it doesn't even make sense. EA, give us Splinter Cell. But they just want Splinter Cell. Like, and it's mm. had it's had a long period now without a game. And you you know it's gonna come because it's such a big franchise. And I can't think of too many games, dead franchises that if it was brought back would would create as much buzz as a Splinter Cell game. And um, personally, uh, I'm sure Vince thinks otherwise with whatever his suggestion is. Yeah. Um, it's a great game to play. The stories are quite well told. Look at the buzz that happened when he appeared in, uh, was it Wildlands? Um, yeah, when he, when he was the DLC in Wildlands and I was like, holy shit, it is Sam Fisher. Like, and it had Ironside's voice back for it. Like, it was an, an incredible moment. And it was one of the reasons I jumped back into that game to go to hear his voice. Like, yeah, for me, I'm going to keep it sweet and short and sweet. Splinter Cell needs to be brought back. And I think it will happen. And I also think that Jade Raymond, this might be the game that she works on because she was heavily tied with the game that was going to come out before she left Ubisoft. This could be what she's potentially working on. I don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Go on, go on, Vince. Go you go. Yeah. You go, go. So my main problem with bringing Splinter Cell back is right now, Ubisoft does not have a great track record going into, you know, their games that have been released recently. I mean, Watch Dogs Legion was not great in any sense of the word. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has its problems. I haven't played it properly yet myself, but I know that game has problems. But then you look at the Tom Clancy franchise, which Splinter Cell is attached to, and we've had Breakpoint, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which mm-hmm. was not good. We've had Wildlands, which was okay at best. Still not great. So- we lost Vince. Oh, Vince is. Sam Fisher has hacked the system. 
Sam but Fisher has I'm... hacked the system. Three dots are just going to appear there. <laughs> like he's going to get taken out. <laughs> he's just going to crack. So he's, his back. Neck. he's back. You're back. You're back. back. You're back. Sam Fisher. We just thought. You we up. thought Sam got you. Yeah, he was not. Or because you slagged off Watch Dogs. Yeah, talking shit about Watch Dogs. Talking shit about Ghost Recon. <laughs> They've hit a stride with Rainbow Six in its multiplayer um, with, uh, what was it called? Siege. Isn't it just Rainbow Six now? Siege, yeah. Siege. Yeah. They hit their stride with that. But even then, that's focused on multiplayer now. Mm-hmm. They haven't really had a great track record with their Tom Clancy games recently, and they haven't really had too great of a track record with games in general recently. So it My- might be, if it comes out, if they do split it so, I don't know if it can live up to the hype as it deserves. You know? Yeah. My, my, my counter argument to that is all those games that you listed, apart from Rainbow Six, which is kind of its own animal, really, just being yeah. a f- fully online game, they're all open world. Splinter Cell will never be an open world game. Level design will be what they do. So I, I think it's very hard to compare the two because where Ubisoft... Yeah rises and falls is by their open worlds. They're either really good or they're buggy as hell. Mm. But in a linear in a linear story, which Mm. Splinter Cell really will be, with their quality of writing and stuff like that, I think it it would be very hard for them. I think it'd be very hard for them to fuck it up. Because Splinter Cell in itself is a really simple idea. Make stealth fun, make the story matter, let you kill people in really cool ways. Yeah. But you might be right, but I, I, can't, I can't see them fucking up because it's not an open world. Sorry, Terry. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I agree with Vince um, in that Ubisoft, um, their bar of quality is very up and down, regardless mm-hmm. of, you know, if it's up or not, I think you never quite know each time what you're going to get with them. Um, but I would also argue that I would say that this is maybe a waste of a uh, of a Phoenix Town because I think it is mm-hmm. a foregone conclusion that we are going to get another Splinter Cell. I mean, yeah, it's technically the franchise at the moment. I would say is more dormant than dead. Um, but I don't think there's no way that we don't get another Splinter Cell game. It's going to happen. When does it happen? I don't know. Hopefully it's soon, but it's going to happen. Um, it's, this isn't like Metal Gear Solid where there's a good possibility we don't get like a proper Metal Gear Solid game again. I'm sure there's going to be some shovelware shit that can only put out without K- Kojima behind it, but there's going to be another Splinter Cell game. It's going to happen. Um, yeah, but I'm impatient, Terry. So <laughs> yeah, you want it now. I want it I want it announced this yeah. E3. And I think there's a possibility. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think it could think definitely happen. Right. The, the, the demand yeah, yeah. is there for sure. And if this was like, yeah, if we were doing this purely for what, you know, people are uh, shouting about the most, Spin Cell is definitely, as far as, as Xbox, Xbox, that community is concerned, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people, vocal people that are asking for Spin Cell, like, where the hell is it? So, yeah, I mean, I can get, I can get why you're asking for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved Spin yeah. Cell, man, playing it. You just, I, it was such a, it was such a well-designed game to play. Mm-hmm. It just worked really well. It's and it's such a rarity now, I think, especially with Ubisoft, mm-hmm. that a game just works oh, yeah. really well. Like, um, I only played the first one. Yeah, yeah, like the first one was really good, but there's been ups and downs. Convictions, mm-hmm. I thought, was a really mm-hmm. solid. Oh yeah, uh, game. I really liked it. Great. The, yeah, the, the original was like one of the technical showcases for the original chaos Xbox. theory or was that the, is chaos theory the second one or the first one uh i think it's the second one right anyway so. we're talking a lot yeah. about my option i don't want to take time away from no. uh vince <laughs> where he picks i don't know yeah because it's been about two months since gears of war come out gears of war or <laughs> oh, no. like, uh, or halo it might be halo at this point like that's franchise is dead <laughs> oh i wish it would just die already they've <laughs> Put too many eggs Die. in that basket. It's unfortunate, especially yeah. with the way Halo Five released. And anyway, the floor is, is yours, Vince. Yeah, it was a pretty good segue for a franchise that I want to talk about because the last entry in it wasn't great, but it deserved to be. 
And that's why I want to talk about Dead Space. Because Dead Space, as a franchise, was, well, I would say great, but one and two were great. Three, I mean, we can just kind of push that to that. We can redo that one. <laughs> redo Dead Space 3. That's what I'm here to pitch right now. <laughs> Dead Space 3. <laughs> Give it a proper ending. But no, I mean, it's a great time to honestly bring that franchise back. We are riding a high right now on, you know, survival horror games with the Resident Evil remakes, with a new Resident Evil game come out, coming out. I mean, it's kind of the perfect time. It's kind of the perfect storm. Because Dead Space was that game that made me believe survival horror was still um, kicking, essentially. I mean, we had a gap with some Resident Evil games. You know, six, not great. Five, pretty good. And then Dead Space comes along and just really shows how to make a great survival horror game. I mean, the way you had to kill enemies in those games was so unique and genius and very specific to the way that game is. You didn't just shoot an enemy full of holes. You had to strategically shoot off limbs in order to stop them coming at you. That was ingenious. And unfortunately, we haven't had anything since. And unfortunately, EA being EA pretty much killed the series. It's so unfortunate. I would love to see what maybe a Dead Space 4 could be, or another entries in the series. And there was just so much more to tell in that world. So much more you could explore. It was, I mean, you have all of space. And you have basically demon zombie things formed by a cult. You do so much more with that. But EA being EA, just kind of fucked it. I would like to see that franchise come back. Because it was at its highest with Dead Space 2. It was great. Because you can't sit here and tell me Dead Space 2 was not great because it was. I think that's pretty much all I had to say about Dead Space. Because oh, I love it. Hey, Harry, you want to go in on this one first? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good show. It's definitely, that would be up there for one of my choices. Um, I mean, I love I love Dead Space 1 and 2. I never played 3. Don't think I ever will because of how yeah, it went. Don't worry about it. And typical, just typical EA doing what EA does and just messing with the, the formula and, and but um, yeah, yeah, you mentioned obviously, you know, dead space filled a void of, uh, you know, a period of, of bad resident evil games. We didn't have any survival mm -hmm. horror and dead space one and two kind of redefined. I feel like um, survival horror at that point, but yeah, I don't know. Like now, yeah, <laughs> Resident Evil is on such a high, you know, we've yeah. got the reboots of, um, you know, we've got, we've got seven and eight and then we've had two and three remake. Um, mm. Since Dead Space, we've had Alien Isolation, which I would, you know, mm. you could argue is like a similar, um, I know it's not, not a shooter, but it's that kind of got that space survival horror down and it did that perfectly. Mm. Um, could it come back now and be, as good as it was as its peers back then. I don't know, especially with EA behind it. I wouldn't want, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a very tricky one. Whereas like, if that came back, would it be as good again? Don't know. It's been a long time. Dead Space 2 is like, what, 2010? Something like that. Something like I think that, that was, like that, so yeah. the last good Dead Space game was over is 11 years ago. Um, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, but it, it, it's definitely worth a shout for chucking, you know, a um, to, re to revive it because it, it was a fantastic franchise and um, it was kind of ruined on the third game in. So, yeah, it's hard to argue against it. But, Adam, what you got to say? Yeah, it's you can look at this two ways. Does it deserve to be brought back? Yes. Maybe as a redemption arc because free was so shit. Does it need to be brought back? Probably not, because I think that market is quite diluted at the moment with like all the Resident Evil remakes and with you're right with Alien and even Prey kind of came into there a little bit doing the say you know space and also obviously Glenn Schofield was obviously I think the lead designer on Dead Space, one of the creators of Dead Space. Anyway, he's yeah. uh, what's his new studio called? Uh, Striking Distance. And yeah. they've got 
Callisto Protocol that's coming out, which is a spe- survival horror game. So if you yeah. just scratch that Dead Space itch, just go to his new game. It's a survival horror, and I've, I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if it's set in space or not, but I'd probably guess that it is. And sure. uh, with the name Callisto Protocol, um, so does it deserve to be brought back? Absolutely. Like one and two were great games. I'm not a huge survival horror person, but I did mm. enjoy them. Like didn't play free, like um, like a lot of people. Um, will it? It's one of them. I don't think it needs to be brought back though. I think one and two were really good. But I think there's a lot of yeah. other things to scratch that itch. But I think it's still a very very good choice. Vince, do you have any rebuttal to this? I mean, the way I see it is that it had so much uniqueness to its survival horror aspects, like the zero G levels and you know, combat in general, that it could push its way to the top of like Resident Evil and things like that because it was so creative with its setting of being, you know, in space, obviously. And. Mm. Yeah. I just really love the game, <laughs> to be honest. The face is always fun. It's a great series. Yeah. I, my question would be, and purely hypothetical, and obviously mm-hmm. there's no right or wrong answer to this, if they did make a new Dead Space, like Dead yeah. Space 4, let's call it that, mm-hmm. and do you think that can compete with the numbers that Resident Evil remakes or a new Resident Evil game could do? Do you think there'd be enough of a market for it? I think so, because there are people out there who also love Dead Space as much as they loved, you know, Resident Evil. Yeah, true, true. So, and with, you know, Resident Evil 7 and 8, people are obviously ex- super excited that that series is continuing, mm-hmm. myself included. So I think there would be the people out there who would be super excited for the Dead Space series to continue. And I've, I mean, we saw it with the Callisto Protocol when it was first revealed. People were wounding over that game because it still looks like, like Dead, Dead Space, Space. It's from the creator of Dead Space. So I think the hype would be there. No, I think I, you're right. I think they'd have to, if they were to do that, they'd have to really push it um, with the marketing because, I mean, I don't know the sales numbers and that, but I imagine that the reason that they went wrong with Dead Space 3 is because they tried to, maybe maybe the first two didn't sell quite as much as they'd hoped and they tried to push three into more of a, you know, like a, a shooter, uh, yeah, an action game, which didn't just didn't work for it. Um, so I don't know. Who knows? Well, we shall. I'm sure we'll see one day. I can't imagine Dead Space will stay dead. I am hey, hey, imagine it will be back in some way. <laughs> if not, just play Callisto Protocol. Um, yeah, oh, I definitely will be playing Callisto Protocol. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, I saw that game. I was like, oh yes, the scratches. That every scratches game. the itch. Yeah. Uh, what a lovely friendly campaign mode and it's nice to have one every once in a while where <laughs> yeah. we don't rip each other to shreds you know it yeah. makes you feel good and um, i think all three of them are very good choices so just to recap we have mr terry jeffs has gone with time splitters uh, he wants to see that rise from the ashes uh, i went with splinter cell um, i like to see those three green lights of glory and we have obviously Vince, who has gone for Dead Space. He liked to see a redemption story for Dead Space, so they can just ignore Dead Space Three totally, and it can go Dead Space One, Two, and Four. Uh, yeah. As always, guys, if you want to vote on this, head over to our Twitter page, which is at Crab Shifty, where you can see a poll that will be live right now, and and you can vote. And you choose the winner. Currently, I am nine and zero. Oh. Uh, sorry, not nine and zero, oh, just yeah. nine in a row. Nine. Uh, I lost the first one. Uh, so you can choose who wins, um, or you can comment underneath, and we'll take those into account as well, and uh, we'll add them into the score. And if you have any other ideas of what we should be debating, then also let us know. And uh, if we choose your idea, we'll also give you a shout out in the video as well. Um, a little bit of housekeeping uh, just before we finish today uh, that you can see what day does this come out on a Monday. So you will see the podcast on Wednesday. You will see the news 
on Friday on our news break show. And then on a Sunday, it will be time for Vince to torture us yet again with the Sunday yeah. Fun Day Challenge. Last week, me and Terry worked together. I don't think that will be happening this week. Uh, <laughs> no. So we'll all. be back to back fighting it out for that title. Um, yeah. But the only thing left to say is thank you to the pun master general himself, Mr. Terry Jess. Thank you very much, Terry. Thank you, guys. It's been fun as always. And a big thank you to the best beard in the business, Mr. Vince Haley. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. <laughs> there we go. And finally to you, stay shifty.